So no introductory series to JavaScript would be complete without talking about some of the functions that are built into arrays. And because arrays are one of the most commonly used data structures, it's hard to imagine a bit of JavaScript code that doesn't use an array in some way or another. It's really useful to know these built-in array functions. So I'm going to run through four of the most common array functions now and demonstrate how you might use them. So the first function is the forEach function. So to use the forEach function, we simply access an array. So I have an array of numbers here, which is literally called numbers. And then after referencing the array, we say dot for each. And inside the parentheses for the for each function, we actually pass another function. And I've actually used an ES6 arrow function here, but this equally could be a function declared with the function keyword. So what can we do inside of our code in the for each function? Well, you'll notice that the arrow function actually accepts one argument, which is number, and that will correspond to each item in the array as the for each function loops over each number. So thinking back to a previous lesson with variable scope, the number variable is now accessible inside of our arrow function. So we might do something simple like this with it. So you can see the arrow function itself is called 10 times once for each item in the array. And each time it is called, the variable number receives the value of the item in the array. So for each is really useful when you just want to loop over an array like you would do with a for loop but you're not actually too worried about modifying the contents of the array, as if we inspect the numbers array lower down, you'll see none of the values have actually changed within the array. So let's look at our next array function. So the second array function we'll look at is the map function, and this has got the same format or syntax as the for each function did, in that we pass in a function inside of the parentheses. But with the map function, we do actually need to return a value from the function that's inside of those parentheses. So let's just return one, for example. And you should notice in the output on the right hand side that we've still got 10 items in the numbers array, but they've actually been mapped or rather changed to the value one. So what the map function allows us to do is loop through all of the items in an array and change their value in some way. And it's common to apply some kind of modifier to the actual item in the array. For example, we could multiply all of those numbers by two. So this is really useful to make a global change to the values in an array by applying some kind of modifier. And if you remember a few lessons back when we talked about functions, there's a way that we can actually make our arrow function a little bit neater. And that is to use an implicit return, which basically means we can remove the return statement and the curly braces from our arrow function. It's worth noting that the map function itself, although it does change the values in the array, it doesn't save it back to the variable that it was called on. So for example, numbers is still equal to the original array that we defined. It's, so if you do want to save the result of a map, you would need to assign it back to the same variable or a new one. And of course, because numbers is defined as a constant, we can't do that here. So we'd either need to define a new variable or change const to a let. So let's have a look at another array function, and that is the filter function. So the filter function actually removes values from the array based on a Boolean condition. So example, in our fat arrow inside of the parentheses, if we were to return false, this is telling the filter function to remove every item in the array. And you'll see in the output on the right hand side that the array then becomes empty. Whereas if we were to return true, you'll see every item within the array is kept. So really with the filter function, we need to pass in a Boolean expression that meets some kind of criteria to remove some items, but not others. So because we have access to each item in the array based on the number variable that's passed in, we can return number is bigger than five, which will only be true for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which are the items that are left in the array. And of course we can make that into an implicit return as well. And that expression can be as simple or as complex as you like. So as you can see, this is a really useful function if you want to remove unwanted items from an array. So an example common use is to remove null or falsy values from an array before that data is sent somewhere else. So the final function we'll look at is the reduce function. So the reduce function is a little bit unique because it actually takes two arguments into its function callback. So the first argument is the accumulator and the second is the item in the array. And in this example, I've called the accumulator accumulator, but you can call this anything you like. And often people shorten it to ACC for short for accumulator, or maybe even just A. So with the reduce function, what the accumulator does is it holds a running total of values. 
So instead of reduce returning an array, it actually returns a single value. So for example, if we wanted to add all of the numbers up that are inside of the array, we could just return from our function the value of accumulator plus the number, which will in turn be each item in the array. So this has the effect of adding all of the numbers in the array together and then returning the result. So whilst this is a good example of adding the numbers together, there's lots of other different uses for reduce. So for example, merging arrays or objects together is something that this could be useful for. So those are four array functions that are available to use on any array in JavaScript. There are actually quite a few more functions that you can make use of within your code, but these are some of the key ones that you'll use on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can see the format of them is very similar. So once you've got familiar with these four, using other ones won't be too tricky.